Okay, I'm going to speak today about um, um, how, how to utilize some uh, geometric intuitions uh, to solve optimization problems and um, so solve optimization problems and um, also we, uh, one of the typical usage of these techniques has to do with reducing um, the number of dimensions uh, that we, we we want to look at in machine learning either for um, um, either for um, uh, visualization or an further analysis and so on. now if you look at the slide you see our new star here um, the name of the cat is shaman which in hebrew means uh fat <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh he's a new star <laughs> uh so some sometimes uh he will join us so uh, at least in spirit um okay 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 so look look at the drawing on the right um I'm not, you know, my drawing is not perfect, but uh, think about it as um, a three-dimension drawing. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, it's as if you have a plane here and uh, the closest, um, and I have a point here, okay? which is represented by the vector V. And now if um, I draw a line here that connects with the plane and is has a 90 degree angle with every line that goes from that point on the plane, then uh, I'm going to get the shortest line that um, connects this point to the plane, right? Is that clear? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, great. Okay, so so here is another line that connects, connects um, you know, a point to the plane, and that line is longer. Um, you can see it because you look at this, triangle here which um, um, and this is this is the line that is opposite to the 90 degree angle so it's longer okay now the the fascinating thing is that um, from a mathematical point of view that this very simple um, maybe high school intuitions apply in a very different setting um, that we can't visualize has many dimensions or maybe even uh, the meaning of a distance is different. Um, and as long as these intuition apply to, to a certain degree, which I'll make precise now, uh, in what sense they need to apply, then we can always um, solve the minimization problem of finding the shortest line that connects a point with the plane uh, by using this intuition. Okay, so that's that's one of the cases in mathematics where we can carry a very fundamental geometric intuition to understand what's going on in a very, very different setting. And that that kind of leads to, you know, things like uh, 
all kind of techniques that we use all the time, like uh, PCA, for instance, uh, the uh, reduction of dimensions uh, uh, for that I mentioned before, and so on. Okay, so that's our setting for today, and let's let's look at how these these geometric intuition are captured in a formal manner. So, um, by the way, I just mentioned that um, all of these uh, short lectures are also they also have those uh, you know lecture notes. So after the lecture, you can go ahead and read the lecture notes and follow the different. Uh, more detailed references and so on. It's, it should be very useful when it's recommended. So assume that we have a vector space. A vector space um, you should be familiar with, uh, with the notion. We'll focus on a vector space that is on top of the real numbers for now. Uh, if if you, you're not certain what a vector space is, go ahead, you know, search uh, vector space, Wikipedia, read about it. Um, just, uh, um, just to give you a, a quick flavor, this, this it's a set with a, a, a sum, summation operation. You can add two elements and multiplication of of uh, a number uh, because we are focusing on the real number with with the elements of the set of the vectors that um, meet certain certain conditions that you would expect them to meet. Essentially, um, the addition is uh, um, is um, um, something like what you see here on the right so if if vp here is a vector and this this is a vector then uh, this one is the addition of the two vectors and, and, and so that's an example of a ve of a vector space actually uh, and the other thing is that uh, you know in r3 a vector if you multiply it by a number it will become longer or shorter according to you to the number. Um, so these, these are the two operations, but you have many other examples of vector space. Uh, get familiar with vector space, it's very useful. Um, okay, so vector space. Now, on top of the vector space, you have something that is called the scalar multiplication, which um, we use to generalize the notion of a length of a vector. Okay. And that, that gives us more or less everything we need, you'll see in a minute, to, um, to make the claim that I may, made here formal and independent of um, the the type of the vector space, as long as it have this structure of the scalar multiplication. Um, so we are basically generalizing the notion of the length of a vector in such a way that any vector with a scalar multiplication structure will have this minimization um, behavior that I talked here geometrically, um, mentioned intuitively, uh, generalized and carried over to the formal setting. So that's that's what we're getting, basically. So what is the scalar multiplication? It's a function from the product of um, the Cartesian product of uh, uh, the set of vectors to the the to in our case to the real numbers that meets a certain conditions that you would expect a scalar multiplication to meet. For instance, um, the addition of the vector is, is linear. Multiplication with the scalar is, uh, behaves like that. It's symmetric because um, we're just dealing with the real numbers. And 
um, the, the multiplication of a vector with itself is greater or equal to zero. So, so the, these these are basically things you formal properties that are ah in the vector uh, is the zero vector if and only if the multiplication of a vector with itself is zero. So the, these properties taken together is a great um, generalization can be used to generalize the, the notion of a length and that's the generalization. So the, the product of the vector with itself is uh, the square of of a generalization of the notion of the length of a vector. Um, if you if you want to if you want to have a deeper dive on this, there's a link um, uh, in the lecture notes to a detailed description of uh, you know um scalar multiplication and you can deep dive into it any any questions or, or comments up to now okay so so essentially what we we've done up to now is uh we have an abstract vector space a scalar multiplication and a notion of a length. And let's see that that notion is interesting. I mean, it might be nonsense. It might not generalize the notion of, a, of the length. So, so for that, we do uh, two things, and then we should be convinced that it has it makes some sense. So, so one thing is that we say that two vectors are uh, has ninety. 90 degree angles between them, they're uh, uh, like we had here. If the scalar multiplication of these two vectors is zero. Okay. So, um, and we we claim that under these uh, generalizations, uh, we actually have the Pythagoras um, in uh theorem uh for um uh, for this structure so which is which is the only thing we will need as you you'll see in a minute to to show that uh indeed this intuition carries to the formal setting so what is the pythagoras uh theorem if we add two vectors, like if you have a vector here, this is a vector and this is a vector and we add them up. So adding two, adding two vectors, the, le the square uh, length of the, the addition of two vectors is equal to the, the square of the first vector and the square of the second vector. Um, Assuming that the two vectors are uh, um, has ninety degree angle, okay. So, so that's what we want to see. Basically, we want to see that the formalism carries this intuition uh, of the Pythagoras theorem. Any any question up to now? A quick question, Aitan. So the when you say the scalar multiplication, that's also called the dot product, right? That V dot W. So the dot, what you're used to as the dot product is is the scalar multiplication. It's a special case. So mm -hmm. so in fact, take the dot product over R n, okay? Mm -hmm. And as an exercise, go try to prove that all of these things apply to the dot product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, the the scale the scalar is basically a constant, so it's not a vector. This means element wise multiplication of something by the constant. Oh, yeah, okay. a, a, a is a constant, so a in specifically in our case a is a number. And the scalar multiplication may, maybe maybe I'll write it here in a minute. Just yeah, it's just like you factor out the constant from the. Yeah, you scale every case. dimension in that vector with that number. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you um, um, if you look at this, um, let's see. If we have two points, x and um, y, um, in in Rn, okay, then the sum of uh, xi times yi, okay, uh, will be an example of the scalar multiplication um, okay mm -hmm. okay and and you can you can try and prove everything we talked about like just give you an example if you take a scalar and multiply it like this okay then according to the definition that would be uh this right yeah and then this will will be this right yeah and this will end up being this according to the definition right so you see that we we just prove one of the properties mm -hmm of the formal generalization of uh, that we introduced. And you can go ahead just as an exercise to see you understand everything. Just try to prove that all of these properties that I listed actually apply to this definition. And now if you if you take a specific, uh, so we said the length, the length of X, um, is um, the square of the length of x is x times uh, the scalar multiplication. Now, if we apply this, you see that it's the sum of uh, xi times xi. And now this is familiar, right? This yeah. is something you're familiar with. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So you see, you see, everything we did here is just a generalization of what you're familiar with. Right. Um, but it's much more powerful because uh, it carries to anything, not only this, anything that meets those properties. Like it, it, we could have a scalar multiplication that is an integral of two functions uh, uh, on on some some compact uh, space, for instance, and so on, okay? Mm -hmm. So it. the scalar multiplication could be things that are much different, but you know, because the, an integral, the scalar goes out, the same property will apply with respect to the scalar because the scalar will go out of the integral, right? You see what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, so like if if I try to if I take two functions, I need to do, I I can't take any two functions. But if I take two functions and I go, I look at at um, f time g of two functions on some interval, and there's there's a scalar here. The scalar will go out. So at least this property will be met, but we need other properties and so on. So you, you can see what, what do we need in terms of choosing two uh, function space 
why is a function space a vector space and so on all of these things these things you get used to okay but then we can prove a, a mean we can prove a minimization property and use it on on functions um so you see how general this notion is just just as an example make sense yeah thanks yeah makes sense great so okay so now the pythagoras theorem so indeed the pythagoras theorem um, uh, we obtain it from the formal properties let's see it so v plus w the square of v plus w um, according to the definition sorry the square of the length of v plus w according to definition is uh, v plus w uh, multiplied with v plus w that's the, that's our definition and then from the fact that it's linear uh, it behaves like uh, you get v times v w times w and two times v times w and two times v uh, times w you get from the symmetry because v times w is the same as w times v um so if you're not certain why i got it you just you need to use this and you use this the first and the third property and you get it um and then we assume that v and w has um is uh has a 90 degree angle so this is zero and we get uh, v the, the length of v uh, the square of the length of v plus the square of the length of w so we have the pythagoras theorem make sense yes no <laughs> Uh, does it make sense or are there any questions on this I think it makes sense okay great so once we we've done that we we have that under our belt we can try and and um and prove the that this this line is minimal in any vector space that with this structure and all we need to do is use the pythagoras theorem so what what is the property of this point this so this this is a subspace in the vector space subspace is a plane is a is is a special case of a plane that goes to zero is a special case in, in Rn or R3 is a special case of a subspace in a vector space, a, 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 which means that when you add vectors, they remain in the set. And when you multiply it by a scalar, they remain in the set. That's the meaning of a subspace. So for any subspace now, um, the, the point here that I'm interested in is a point that is, has a 90 degree angle with all other vectors in the subspace. So um, if I take any vector V in the vector space, then um, If I take any vector uh, v and I assume that I have such a point here, then this triangle forms uh, a triangle with a 90 degree angle. So we have the Pythagoras theorem. So um, the length here 
will equal the, the this length, which is V minus VP plus um, this length, which is um, um, so th this is an, uh, just u minus vp. U, u is the, the other po point in the subspace. So again, this is a special point that is, uh, has a 90 degree angle with any other point u in the subspace. So, um, and this is this is the point we're interested in, the vector we're interested in, V. And we want um, we want to show that this point that is uh, that has a ninety degree angle with all the other vectors in the subspace is actually um, the closest. Um, the closest point in the subspace to the point we started from. Okay, so all we do is write the Pythagoras theorem, and because the length is always um, greater than zero, why, why is the length greater than zero? Does anyone know? which length? The length from the point to this uh, point in the plane? Yes, but any length, any any times I look at this, at the length, yeah. it's greater than zero. Why is V times V greater than zero? It's only zero if, if it's the zero vector itself, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. greater than zero. That's one of the axioms, right? That's the magnitude of the vector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But even without intuition, that's one of the axioms. We yeah. we say that v times v is greater than zero. <coughs> or if, so this is this is greater than zero. It's also the square, so it's greater than zero. But even without the square, it's greater than zero. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure you're following me. <laughs> um, so so this is greater than zero. Uh, so I can drop it, and it's bigger or equal to um, so this vector the length of this vector is um, bigger okay bigger than the length of this vector which is what I wanted basically um, v minus vp is this vector so you see that I don't need the drawing anymore I mean I don't need the intuition the intuition can guide me, but then I kind of moved from the intuition to a formalism that gives me the same thing. I can always switch back to the intuition because I know to think about it because I know the intuition applies, and then I can use the formalism to prove it and see that I didn't make a mistake. And I have a very generic solution to uh, this minimization problem what is what is the short what is the point in the subspace that is closest to the point to any point in the vector space and um, that is a point that uh, kind of uh, in the sense of uh, if we go back to machine learning and uh, dimension reduction and so on, so on it will be a point that uh, in some space that captures uh, as much of the information of the problem that is closest, closest as possible to some other point in the higher dimension. So you're in, intuitively preserving as much, as much information as you can when you reduce the dimensions. Um, okay, so that, that's, that's the idea. Any, any other questions or comments? Uh, so I think I was a little bit confused on when you said that is a, that is at right angle to all the vectors in this subspace. 
So that mm -hmm. part I'm not able to get uh, intuitively what that means. So the distance. So the, if I law, if I draw a line from the point that is it's, in the vector it's a special scales, point, Pritika, it's, mm -hmm. it's a special point that um, it's it's called sometimes it's called pro, the projection. Maybe I should have said that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's helpful. It, it's it's a special point on the plane or on the subspace. That meets uh, a formal criteria that it's it it it's um, uh, has ninety degree uh, angle with all the other. Let let me write it for you formally. Yeah, it will be helpful. I hope. Um, so you have you have a vector space V, and now you have um a subspace w okay and there's um so you have you, you take some vector w uh let's call it um some some vector um uh, well, I'll call I'll call the vector t. I just want to make sure it's it's a different letter. There's a vector t, okay. Um, that uh, if you multiply it with any w, um, it's um, uh, zero with a, with any w and w. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's. Uh, and also that vector is interestedly enough um, so so we 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 will also discuss on how to find that vector i'm not discussing it now it's it's a different story mm -hmm. okay uh it uh, there's, there's ways to find that vector that special vector but now it's intuitive and also sometimes it exists sometimes it doesn't exist so so there's there's more details here. I see. Okay, that makes sense. So it's yeah. not always there. So in some cases, there is a vector such that it is. It, yes, in some sense, it's always there, but you need. Mm -hmm. uh, but if um, you, you'll see in the lecture notes, if, if the space has a hole, so to speak, mm -hmm. <laughs> it might be missing. You see, it's okay. it's there, but it's missing in some sense, and you should. You should fix the the space uh, so that it won't be missing. Mm -hmm. uh, we we talked about that notion. Uh, we mentioned it uh, uh, in the previous meeting. We talked about completeness. Yeah. So in, in a space where every Cauchy sequence has has a a limit, then the point always exists. Okay. Uh, good, very nice. Any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining today and we'll continue next time. Thank, thank you. Dan. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.